Peter, Paul, Satan. The abomination of desolation. And the sign of Jonah. Unbound. The narrow path of freedom from Satan, Simon, and Saul, to our first love Yahweh and his son Yeshua, our brother. You have most likely heard, read or even studied the story of Jonah in the whale. It is one of those stories that non-Christians point to when saying that the Bible is either a fairy tale, allegory, or a really bad lie. Most folks assume it was fabricated for the pure purpose of controlling people. Well, it certainly has done that. However just because very evil powers have taken hold of the scriptures and done horrible things to people using it as their weapon, does not mean it is not real. A careful study will reveal that the Bible that we as believers follow, has been filled with false teachers, lies and deception. The prophets and writers even knew this would happen and when we dive into the true translation and even uncover the simple obvious truths that we have read right over, we find the amazing truth. Our Savior, the Messiah, spoke in parables for this reason. Large parts of the word, would and could not be understood until the last days. Seek and ye shall find. Ask for the Holy Spirit to be your guide and pray for the truth to be revealed to you. Dig for the truth because it is the only treasure of eternal purpose. What I am writing here I learned directly from study with the Holy Spirit as my guide. Most of this I have never heard before from anyone. Some of it are great pearls that have never been known by humans. We will uncover why even the mistranslations, false teachers, liars, deception, and even evil and Satan himself have an eternal purpose. And we find that these things had to come to pass. First let us read this translation of Matthew 16, to get the entire context of this study. The chapter of Matthew 16, F.C. for translation. The Pharisees and Sadducees demand signs. Matt 16 colon 1 The Parashim also with the Tzedokim came, and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Matt 16 colon 2 He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, yes say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. Matt 16 colon 3 And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! Ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Matt 16 colon 4 A wicked and adulterous nation seeks after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Yonah. And he left them, and departed. The leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Matt 16 colon 5 And when his Talmudim were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Matt 16 colon 6 Then Yahyashah said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Parashim and of the Tzedokim. Matt 16 colon 7 And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Matt 16 colon 8 Which when Yahyashah perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little belief, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread. Matt 16 colon 9 Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up. Matt 16.10 Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up. Matt 16.11 How is it that ye do not understand that I spoke it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the parashim and of the tzedokim? Matt 16.12 Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the parashim and of the tzedokim. Peter confesses Yeshua as the Messiah. Matt 16:13 When Yahyashah came into the coasts of Ki Kariah Alipai, he asked Eth his Talmidim, saying, Whom do men say that I the son of Adam am? Matt 16:14 And they said, Some say that you are Yahyashanan the Immerser, some, Eliyahu, and others, Yermeyahu, or one of the prophets. Matt 16:15 He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Matt 16, 16 And Shimon Kepha answered and said, You are Hamashiach, the son of the living Yah. Matt 16, 17 And Yahyashah answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Shimon Berianah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Matt 16, 18 And I say also unto you, that you are Kepha, and upon this rock I will rebuild eth my called out assembly, 
and the gates of Sheol shall not prevail against it. Matt 16 19 And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of Yahweh, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Matt 16 20 Then charged he his Talmudim that they should tell no man that he was Yahyasha Hamashiach. Yeshua foretells his death and resurrection. Matt 16 21 From that time forth began Yahyasha to show unto his Talmudim, how that he must go unto Yerushalayim, and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and be raised again the third day. Matt 16 22 Then Kepha took him, and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from you, Adonai, this shall not be unto you. Matt 16 23 But he turned, and said unto Kepha, Get behind me, Satan, you are an offense unto me, for you savor not the things that be of Yahweh, but those that be of men. Take up your cross and follow Yeshua. Matt 16 24 Then said Yahyasha unto his Talmudim, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Matt 16 25 For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Matt 16 26 For what is a man profited, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Matt 16 27 For the son of Adam shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Matt 16 28 Amen I say unto you, there be some standing here, which shall not taste of death, till they see the son of Adam coming in his kingdom. I used this translation only here and from here on will be using the King James. The Sefer translation was simply for the Hebrew and Greek wording. And to show how different the meanings can become when translated. I do not agree with a great deal of its translation. Like most translations it is built on assumed meanings. I like the KJV because one can take each word back to the original Greek and Hebrew and the original sentence structure which is key to really understanding what the scriptures say. I use the Strong's Concordance and Interlinear Scripture Analyzer, which helps with comparative various word meanings and sentence structures from dozens of ancient texts. I prefer the original Hebrew names of Yeshua and Yahweh. And adore the most ancient picked Ural Hebrew. I prefer the original ancient Hebrew names like Ashi and Huhi. The overall subject matter of this chapter is that, the Pharisees and Sadducees demand signs. The leaven is the doctrine. So, we are to beware the doctrine of these authorities and teachers of half-truths and lies, because they are spiritually blind. We know this because with all their knowledge and traditions and even laws, man-made laws, they did not even recognize the Messiah. Let us look deeper into the verses, in verse 15 he saith unto them, But whom say you that I am? And Simon, Peter, answers that he is the Christ, degree the son of the living Elohim, Yahweh. Christ is a shortened form of christened and means anointed. In verse 17 we see a divine revelation. Peter's confession, is the foundation to be built on. Not Simon himself. However, Peter did build a congregation and assembly. In verse 17 blessed equals happy. Simon bar Jonah equals Simon, son of Jonah. Remember this interesting truth that he is the son of or in the lineage of a man named Jonah. In John 21 he is again referred to as Simon bar Jonah. Also, most folks do not notice that Judas, was Simon's son which is probably reason they were both waiting for an earthly politically motivated messiah slash king. They were both expecting his reign and authority in their time. Jonah, who was in Whale was the son of Amittai the prophet which was of the town of gath Hepper, three miles north of Nazareth. Jonah means dove. Yeshua uses Simon's human name and parentage in contrast with the divine origin of the revelation made to him. Bar Jonah is Aramaic. Bar is the Aramaic equivalent of the Hebrew Ben and means son of or from the lineage of Simon is called a Peter only here in Matthew. Yeshua always called him Simon except one time in Luke 22:34. The term flesh and blood is important, for a mortal human being in contrast with Yahweh the Father in heaven. The name Peter, 
is actually a descriptive title, or nickname for him. Peter's title is very important. In the Greek, it is Petros and means a stone loose and movable. Loose and movable stone. Not what we would want to build something enduring. Yeshua's statement is very emphatic, as though pointing to himself as the real stone. John 2, 19, and 6.68. Where this same use of wordage has the same results. These are passages where this stands for the speaker. John 2, 19, and 6. 68, this rock gr Petra, Petra is feminine, and therefore could not refer to Peter. It refers to Peter's confession, and it would agree with homologia, which is feminine, and is rendered confession. Whether we are to understand it, with Augustine and Jerome, as implying thou hast said it or thou hast confessed it, most great scholars, Protestant, in 1800s and turn of the century, as well as these ancient fathers agree that Simon Peter's confession is the foundation to which Christ referred, and not Peter himself. The well-known scholar, Bullinger also believed this. He was neither the foundation nor the builder, a poor builder, v. 23, where Yeshua recognized Simon to be Satan, when he said get thee behind me Satan, but Christ alone can build the true congregation. This is very emphatic and of great significance to all the scripture and the prophets and prophesy. It ends the great subject of this second portion of Yeshua's ministry. Rook gr Petra equals a rock immovable, is the Messiah, as being the son of the living Elohim. Yeshua is the only foretold foundation stone. PSA 92 O Yahweh, how great are thy works! And thy thoughts are very deep. PSA 92 6 A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. PSA 92 7 When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. PSA 92 8 But thou, Yahweh, art most high forevermore. PSA 92 9 4, Lo, thine enemies, O Yahweh, for, lo, thine enemies shall perish, all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. PSA 92 10 But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. PSA 92 11 Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. PSA 92 12 The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. PSA 92 13 Those that be planted in the house of Yahweh shall flourish in the courts of our Elohim. PSA 92 14 They shall still bring forth fruit in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. PSA 92 15 To shew that Yahweh is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. A cornerstone in Zion. Isa 28 14 Wherefore hear the word of the Yahweh, yes scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Isa 28 15 Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell, Sheol, which is Hebrew for the name Saul slash Paul, are we at agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Isa 28 16 Therefore thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious corner stone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste, this stone is not a loose and movable stone. Isa 28 17 Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. Yeshua is the rejected stone, PS 118 22, the stone that the builders refused. Yeshua, will be the head cornerstone. Will equals shall. Therefore, then future, as in Hose 1. 10, 2. 23. PSA 118 14 Yahweh is my strength and song, and is become my salvation. The Hebrew name, Yeshua literally means Yahweh's salvation. 
PSA 118:15 The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous, the right hand of Yahweh doth valiantly. PSA 118:16 The right hand of Yahweh is exalted, the right hand of Yahweh doth valiantly. PSA 118:17 I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of Yahweh. PSA 118:18 Yahweh hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death, Sheol. Saul slash Paul. PSA 119 Open to me the gates of righteousness, I will go into them, and I will praise Yahweh. PSA 118 20 This gate of Yahweh, into which the righteous shall enter, the narrow gate. PSA 118 21 I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. PSA 118:22 The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. PSA 118:23 This is Yahweh's doing; it is marvelous in our eyes. The stone that the builders refused. Who are these builders? The masons, stone masons, and all the powers that control and work under the control of Satan. The ones in power at the very top level, like the Rothschilds the false tribe of Judah, Jews, the bankers, the Illuminati. Even our leaders have no real control but are mere puppets in the hands of these world controllers. They have especially controlled the churches, the modern-day Pharisees. This was all foretold and also that only those with eyes to see would learn and know these deceptions and come out of this demonic authority known as the generally understood Christian church. This is the narrow path and true walk of all anointed ones, true Christians. Christ means anointed, in Matthew 16. 25-28, we have the true church that the gates of hell shall not prevail against. The name Saul, Paul, actually is the Hebrew for hell. Both Simon and Paul were used by Satan to build a false church and control all would-be believers in Yeshua. Paul, was from Tarsus. Jonah was fleeing to Tars Hish to avoid going to Nineveh. The same place. The use of Ish in Hebrew, simply means men or men. Paul's salvation story is told three times in three very conflicting ways. He is blinded for three days as a result of his reported vision, three is another reference to Jonah. Paul said scales fell from his eyes when he was healed. Scales is a reference to fish, as used in Leviticus 11:9, He was healed in the house of Judas, which was the same name as the son of Peter. Judas is Simon Peter's son. This is written many different times in scripture, yet I have only known of one person who mentions it. Joe 6:70 Yeshua answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Joe 6:71 He spake of Judas Iscariot the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Judas is called Iscariot, because Ish means man and Cariot in Greek means cut off. His name was Judas ben Simon. Ben means son of. Nowhere is it said that he is not Peter's son or that he is another Simon, so we should not assume otherwise. Judas was literally the man that was cut off. Judas, like his dad was expecting and hoping for a new political leader slash king. He was not expecting them to crucify Yeshua. The devil, Satan, had entered him and confused and used him. This is why he threw back the money and committed suicide. Judas thought he was helping to further the acknowledgement by the Pharisees and Sadducees of this new king. It must have been tough to have a father like Simon, CEO of a big fishing operation with many boats and employees. He was obviously used to handling and keeping the bag slash money when working for the family business. In John 6 61 we see this revolution being referred to. A revolutionary movement was gathering around Yeshua and making him its figurehead, as in John 6:15. These people had misconceived the meaning of his ministry, which was not to raise a revolt against Rome, but to lead to a spiritual revolution. Judas and Simon Peter were looking for this earthly king. It was not to be at that time but will come to pass when he returns to rule. Yeshua shall rule as king of all creation in the future but at the time of walk with these twelve disciples he came to be a crucified lamb. 
When did Yeshua ever blind or injure a person? Remember, Satan is a deceiver and an angel of light. Lucifer means, light giver. Masons, learn this at the higher degrees, and worship Satan directly as such. This is why our English translations about Satan in the Garden of Eden, refer to him as a snake, because of his shining appearance. I have done more in-depth writing on Paul in other books that are published on Amazon, Kindle and other publishing companies and a number of videos on my two YouTube channels and other video hosting websites. So we will not be focusing on Paul so much here. I know of none who has spoken out clearly on Simon Peter, this is why I am now. Our English word call slash called is actually a Hebrew word, K-A-L, and has the same meaning. Many are called, but few are chosen. Call is translated to assembly and church in our Bibles. Many are in the wide path of the so-called Christian assemblies. Churches and followers of Jesus, which actually means son of Zeus. We are to be called out true believers. Come out of her my people. The names were all changed as the result of Paul teaching to Greeks who understood Zeus to be God. Even the term God is the name of the Phoenician God of Fortune, Gad. Let's look into this word stone more. Daniel interpreted the vision of the great statue seen in the vision of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar's Dream Dan 2 colon 1 And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break from him. Dan 2 colon 2 Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to shew the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Dan 2 colon 3 And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Dan 2 colon 4 Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever, tell thy servants the dream, and we will shew the interpretation. Dan 2 colon 5 The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me, if ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. Dan 2 colon 6 But if ye shew the dream, and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor, therefore shew me the dream, and the interpretation thereof. Dan 2 colon 7 They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will shew the interpretation of it. Dan 2 colon 8 The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. Dan 2 colon 9 But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me, till the time be changed, therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can shew me the interpretation thereof. Dan 2 10 The Chaldeans answered before the king, and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can shew the king's matter, therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler, that asks such things at any magician, or astrologer, or Chaldean. Dan 2 11 And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can shew it before the king, except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. Dan 2 12 For this cause the king was angry and very furious, and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Dan 2 13 And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Dan 2 14 Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. Dan 2 15 He answered and said to Ariok the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. Dan 2 16 Then Daniel went in, and desired of the king that he would give him time, and that he would shew the king the interpretation. Yahweh reveals Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Dan 2 17 Then Daniel went to his house, and made the thing known to Hananiah, Missal, and Azariah, his companions, their real Hebrew names their parents gave them. Dan 2 18 That they would desire mercies of Yahweh of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Dan 2 19 Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed Yahweh of heaven. 
Dan 2.20 Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of Yahweh forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Dan 2.21 And he changeth the times and the seasons, he removeth kings, and setteth up kings, he giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know understanding. Dan 2.22 He revealeth the deep and secret things, he knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Dan 2.23 I thank thee, and praise thee, O thou Elohim of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Dan 2.24 Therefore Daniel went in unto Ariok, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon, he went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon, bring me in before the king, and I will shew unto the king the interpretation. Dan 2.25 Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah, that will make known unto the king the interpretation. Dan 2.26 The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Dan 2.27 Daniel answered in the presence of the king, and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, shew unto the king. Dan 2.28 But there is an Elohim in heaven that revealeth secrets, and make known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream, and the visions of thy head upon thy bed, are these. Dan 2.29 As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed, what should come to pass hereafter, and he that revealeth secrets make known to thee what shall come to pass. Dan 2.30 But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Daniel interprets the dream. Dan 2.31 Thou, O king, sawest, and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. Dan 2.32 This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. Dan 2.33 His legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Dan 2.34 Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Dan 2.35 Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold, broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. Dan 2.36 This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Dan 2.37 Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for Yahweh of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Dan 2.38 And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. Dan 2.39 And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Dan 2.40 And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Dan 2.41 And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. Dan 2.42 And as the toes of the feet were part of iron, and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong, and partly broken. Dan 2.43 And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Dan 2.44 And in the days of these kings shall Yahweh of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. 
Dan 245 For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great Elohim, Yahweh hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Daniel is promoted. Dan 246 Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face, and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. Dan 247 The king answered unto Daniel, and said, Of a truth it is, that your Elohim is a Elohim of Elohims, and a Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal the secret. Dan 248 Then the king made Daniel a great man, and gave him many great gifts, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Dan 249 Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Chaldean names, over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. It was prophesied that this statue represented the great world powers that would affect and control the ages, past and present. Specifically, the Hebrew people. It was a great stone slash rock that came from heaven that destroyed them all, in the end time that we now live in. If Simon Peter had been that rock then this would have happened 2000 years ago. Peter, the cussing, lying, denying, disciple was clearly not the righteous stone of Zion, sent from heaven. Only Yeshua, has come from heaven and lived a perfect righteous life. Yeshua, chose Simon and Judas for important reasons. He knew that these things must come to pass just like Daniel did. Let us look at another mention of a stone. Jacob's stone. Jacob also had a vision, and he was sleeping by a stone when it happened. This was the time and place where his name was changed to Israel. The stone was small enough to be carried. This actual stone was taken by the prophet Jeremiah when the king of Jerusalem and the southern tribes were taken to Babylon. He took it with him to Egypt with the two king's daughters. From there they sailed to Europe and the stone came to Ireland. It is referred to as the Stone of Scone. This stone was considered so important that it was taken to Britain and put under the throne where many kings and queens have sat. Queen Elizabeth was crowned over this stone while seated in this throne. The Masons of Scotland, Stone Masons, have begged for its ownership for a very long time and were eventually given a false replica of it by Britain. They do not know it. It is interesting to note that the Vatican, the mother slash harlot, Church of Paul, never held the stone. These stories are known in Ireland for centuries and are wonderfully documented by E. Raymond Captain. I have a video about it on one of my two YouTube channels. Let us go back to Matthew 16. In Matthew 16 verse 19 And I will give unto thee, Simon, Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. These keys are carved in the chair slash throne of Peter in the Vatican, and held by Simon in the large statue of him there in the courtyard. These keys are echoed by Alistair Crowley and other occultists, witches, and Satan worshippers. The Baphomet statues and drawings reflect this by the raised hand with two fingers, two keys, and the arms pointing upwards and the other hand pointing downwards to the earth. The power of binding and loosening. The church even represents Jesus with this same gesture. In fact, the main teachings of these pagans are as above so below and do as thou wilt is their law. These evil groups of pagans are not referring to Yahweh's will but whatever a person may desire. When Yeshua went into the desert and fasted after his baptism, he was approached by Satan who offered him the power and control of this world age. The power to bind and loosen are Satan still. Yeshua, said what will it profit you if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul. When Yeshua offered the keys to Simon Peter, he was simply telling Satan that if he, Yeshua, wanted that power, at that time, he could have kept it. He also mentions the angels, as in the desert, coming to his side. He reminds Satan, as Simon Peter, of this. Matt 16 27 For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, 
and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Here we are reminded of the desert temptation by Lucifer, thus tying the beginning of Yeshua's ministry to the end. Let us dive deeper into the connection with Yeshua and the angels. Take up your shepherd's staff and follow Yeshua. Matt 16:24 Then said Yeshua unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, staff, and follow me. Matt 16:25 For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Matt 16:26 For what is a man profited, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Matt 16:27 For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Matt 16:28 Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here, which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Temptation of Yeshua Matt 4 colon 1 Then was Yeshua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Matt 4 colon 2 And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hung red. Matt 4 colon 3 And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of Yahweh, command that these stones be made bread. Matt 4 colon 4 But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. Matt 4 colon 5 Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Matt 4 colon 6 And saith unto him, If thou be the son of Yahweh, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Matt 4 colon 7 Yeshua said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Yahweh thy Elohim. Matt 4 colon 8 again, The devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and sheth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. Matt 4 colon 9 And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Matt 4 10 Then saith Yeshua unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahweh thy Elohim, and he only shalt thou serve. Matt 4 11 Then the devil leaveth him, and, behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Let us look at this same account in Luke also. Luck 4 colon 1 And Yeshua being full of the Holy Spirit, Ruash Hakoj, returned from Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Luck 4 colon 2 Being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Luck 4 colon 3 And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of Yahweh, command this stone that it be made bread. Luck 4 colon 4 And Yeshua answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of Yahweh. Luck 4 colon 5 And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Luck 4 colon 6 And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. Luck 4 colon 7 If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Luck 4 colon 8 And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Yahweh thy Elohim, and him only shalt thou serve. Luck 4 colon 9 And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the son of Yahweh, cast thyself down from hence. Luck 4 10 For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee. Luck 4 11 And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Luck 4 12 And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Yahweh thy Elohim. Luck 4.13 And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. It is well known that the order of the temptations in Matthew is not the same as in Luke. Critics assume that the one is right and the other is wrong, and proceed to change the order of one in order to make it agree with the other. 
but an examination of the combined accounts, giving due weight to the words and expressions used, will explain all the differences. Notice these repeated same mentions of Satan getting behind Yeshua, stones, angels, and the power and authority Satan currently and temporarily has and offers to Yeshua. This is the same power Yeshua offers back to Satan as Simon. Matthew 16 verse 19 And I, Yeshua, will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Luke 4 colon 3 comma 4 The devil, Ho Diabolos, said to him, Speak to this stone, to litho tauto, that it become a loaf, artos. Luke 4 colon 5 dash 8 And the devil, conducting, anagagon, him, shew to him all the kingdoms of the habitable, world, or land, Greek oikomene, in a moment of time. Satan claims to possess the right to the kingdoms of the world, and Yeshua does not dispute it. Satan says, To thee will I give this authority, exousia, and all their glory, for to me it has been delivered, and to whomsoever I wish I give it. Therefore, if thou wilt worship before me, all shall be thine. Yeshua said Get thee hence. Satan did not depart then, any more than Simon Peter did when the same was said to him in Matthew 16:23. Let us quickly be reminded of some verses and look deeper. Luke 4 colon 9-12 And he conducted him to Jerusalem, and set him upon the wing or battlement, of the temple, and said to him, If thou art the son of Yahweh, cast thyself down hence, for it is written, that to his angels he will give charge concerning thee, to keep thee. Satan said, If thou art the son of Yahweh, say that these stones become loaves, Greek, artoi. Luke 4 colon 5 dash 8 Again the devil taketh him unto an exceedingly high mountain, and shook to him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, and said to him, All these things and all this authority, will I give to thee if, falling down, reference to the fallen angels, thou wilt worship me. Here, in this last temptation, the climax is reached. It is direct worship Satan wants. Yeshua had said Get thee behind me, Satan in Matthew 16. In this verse there is this odd mention of turning. Matt 16 23 But he turned, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of Yahweh, but those that be of men. Apparently, Simon was already physically behind Yeshua. This makes it even clearer that Yeshua is actually talking directly to the fallen one Satan, within Simon. Satan and the other angels that fell all wanted what Yahweh had given to Adam, and all humans Yahweh created. This started right in the Garden of Eden with Eve. Lucifer was jealous of us. Wise as he was, he knew Yahweh had big plans for what will happen in eternity with his children. Satan had no power or authority of his own, and his days are numbered. He is the tool in Yahweh's hand to give us the choice of good or evil. The free will choice. Look at the horrendous suffering and injustice of our fallen world, even the animals and all nature fell, and they also look forward to the redemption of all creation. If so-called nature lovers and environmentalists realized this their focus should be changed to worshipping Yahweh, instead of this temporary fallen creation. Truly it is all summed up in this verse, Matt 16:26. For what is a man profited, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? A wise person will focus on the things of eternity. If, you lose your soul, then what is the point of all this world age and the temporary things and powers of it? Righteousness must be chosen not just bestowed upon us. Satan and his crew will come to pass. To drive this point home, we have Yeshua here showing that he knew what he had come to do and that, Judas, Simon Peter, Paul and Satan were just part of that purpose. Matt 16 20 then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that was the Messiah. Matt 16 21 from that time forth began Yeshua to shew unto his disciples, how that he must go unto Jerusalem, and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and be raised again the third day. 
Third day is another reference to the sign of Jonah. This is the interpretation and only general understanding of the sign of Jonah that people think of. Notice that the Catholic and Protestant churches have never promoted three actual days. They make Friday evening their crucifixion and Sunday before sunrise into a tradition of men and worship them as holy days or holidays. Let us sum up some what we have learned thus far from Matthew 16. Verse 22 Then Peter took him, and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. 23 But he turned, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of Yahweh, but those that be of men. 24 Then said Yeshua unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, staff slash shepherds, staff and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. The word church equals assembly, and the remnant, the called. The word church comes from the Hebrew word kal not the ecclesia of the mystery, or so called secret, in Ephesians written by Paul slash Saul but that referred to in P.S. 22. 22, 25. Matt 16, 18 And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates. Put by fig. Metonymy, of adjunct, for power. The gates of hell equals the gates of Hades, Sheol in Hebrew is also the word Saul equals grave. This denoting the power of the grave to retain, as in Esau 38. 10, Job 38. 17, PS 9. Hell equals the grave, Hades. The word prevail in Greek is katischad. This word occurs only here and in Luke 23. It means to have full strength, to another's detriment, i.e., the grave shall not have power to retain its captives, because Yeshua holdeth the keys of those gates, and they shall not be strong enough to triumph over believers. Revelation 1. CPPS 68. 20. Resurrection is the great truth asserted here as in Isaac, 37. 11 to 14, Acts 2. 29, and Hose 13. 14 in verse 19 the keys put by fig. Metonymy, of cause, for the power to open. Yeshua Messiah has the keys of Hades, Simon Peter, as Satan was temporarily given the keys of the kingdom the kingdom of heaven equals the kingdom of the heavens. This power Peter exercised in Acts 2 in Israel, and Acts 10 among the so-called Gentiles. This power was exercised in Acts 5. 1-11 in Matthew verses 12-16. Binding and loosing is a Hebrew idiom for exercising authority. To bind equals to declare what shall be binding, e.g. laws and precepts, and what shall be not binding. Which is exactly what Peter effectively did with the help of Paul. Satan used Simon, Judas, and Saul to bind us all. Yahweh allowed this to the end that we would learn the parable of the sower, personally and choose the good soil and life eternal as the seed of, children of the Most High, Yahweh. Matt 7:13 Enter yet in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Matt 7:14 Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. A tree and its fruit. Matt 7:15 Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matt 7:16 Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Matt 7:17. 7, Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Matt 7:18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Matt 7:19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, and cast into the fire. Matt 7:20. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Matt 7 21 Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. 
Matt 7:22 Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Matt 7:23 And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Build your house on the true unmovable rock. Matt 7:24 Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Matt 7:25 And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Matt 7:26 And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, movable rock, a Peter. Matt 7:27 And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Let us look at some of these verses in light of our subject of Satan, Simon, Saul, and the sign of Jonah. We are told, to go in at the narrow gate. Surely there are very few at this time that see the connection made clear about Satan, Simon, and Saul. The big churches and most teachers would never even consider these truths. The sheep have been led astray by the wolves in sheep's clothing. They are clearly stated to be false prophets, specifically ravening wolves. They even prophesied in Yeshua's name, cast out devils and have done many wonderful works. Yeshua never denies that they had this power or that they did these things. So, we will look for other fruits of eternal truth and importance when deciding who these wolves are. The wise man does not just hear of these sayings but does them. The name Simon means literally hearing. Simon heard all these things directly from Yeshua repeatedly for over three years. Matt 7:23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let us look at one shocking fruit and testimony of Simon's power to bind and loosen. Ananias and Sapphira. Act 5 colon 1 But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession. Act 5 colon 2 And kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Act 5 colon 3 But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Act 5 colon 4 Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto Yahweh. Act 5 colon 5 And Ananias hearing these words fell down, and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. Act 5 colon 6 And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. Act 5 colon 7 And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Act 5 colon 8 And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Act 5 colon 9 Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Act 5 10 Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in, and found her dead, and, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Act 5 11 And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. Many signs and wonders done. Act 5:12 And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Act 5:13 And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. Act 5:14 And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. Act 5.15 In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets, and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Act 5.16 There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, 
and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed everyone. We have heard this story and never saw how truly scary it is. Simon claims to be the Holy Spirit and, the Spirit of the Yeshua. Nowhere, in scripture even the Old Testament are folks told that they give more than a tithe, 10%, to the temple, or church or the teachers. This shows so clearly the worldly motivation of Simon and his frightening power of binding and loosening. He literally drops them dead at his feet. And it is clearly stated that great fear came upon all the others that were these new believers which include the other disciples. This is how Simon he began his church. Act 5 colon 3 But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? It is shocking that Simon could speak to anyone about Satan, and lying to the point that he became judge and jury and pronounced a death sentence for doing so. Just a short time before this he was literally filled with the presence of Satan, and lied about even knowing Yeshua. A normal person would have more compassion. What did Yeshua do when Simon did his evil deeds? He simply prayed for him and asked that he might strengthen the other disciples and believers. This power of binding and loosening and murder, did not strengthen them they were afraid of him. This is the beginning of the wide gate path and its church. After this it is said multitudes joined. This is Simon's church with no compassion, great fear, unquestioning followers, the expected giving of money to join, many signs and healings and exclusive controlling leaders. All of which were prophesied to happen by Yeshua. Simon's church and methods were exactly like that of Muhammad and Islam. Muhammad would personally encamp with his fearful followers by traveled roads and take all a person had and would murder them if they did not join him. He was a tyrant, murder, liar, and thief. In this story, the young men came in, found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. They did not even think twice but, did Simon's dirty work. They were already being conditioned to be blind sheep with ravening wolves in sheep's clothing as their pastors. Indeed, this has quickly become the wide gate with many blind followers. Matt 7:13 Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Matt 7:14 Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Matt 7:15 Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matt 7:20 Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Matt 7:21 Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Matt 7:22 Too many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Matt 7 23 And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Nowhere in scripture is it even implied that any of the other disciples or true apostles did anything like what Simon did except for Judas, Simon's son. Joe 6 70 Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Joe 6 71 He spake of Judas Iscariot the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. There are two disciples named Simon. The other one called Simon the Zealot. Zealot meant one with zeal. Since he is barely mentioned except as a seeker and friend of Nathaniel, it seems more likely this refers to Simon Peter, because of his constant obsession with money and power. Even Judas showed how repentative he was of being misled to betray Yeshua. It seems clear that he was deceived and thought he was ushering a worldly king into the position of authority by bringing on the situation for his declaration of kingship at that time. Simon is not even said to have mourned his own son's suicide. In fact, he immediately goes back to being the CEO and owner of his fishing enterprise. Simon was motivated by money. Money from the church and money from his business. Sounds just like many leaders today in modern large churches. Money, multitudes, and exclusive authority. The other disciples immediately get to work on amazing endeavors to carry out the continuing gospel of Yeshua. 
none of them made any attempt to be in charge. They were moving in more spiritual ways and like Enoch, and almost entirely disappear from the canon of our present Bible. They write amazing things as did John. But they certainly were not writing about themselves and how great they were. A few mentions, a few letters. No claims to be the leader of any church or primary teacher. For instance, Philip is being physically moved long distances. Great mystical abilities are casually mentioned. Philip proclaims Christ in Samaria. Act 8 4 Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Act 8 5 Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and preached Messiah unto them. Act 8 6 And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Act 8 7 For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. Act 8 8 And there was great joy in that city. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Act 8 26 And the angel of the Yahweh spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Act 8 27 And he arose and went, and, behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Act 8 28 was returning, and sitting in his chariot read Esaias the prophet. Act 8 29 Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, and join thyself to this chariot. Act 8 30 And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Esaias, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Act 8 31 And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Act 8.32 The place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. Act 8.33 In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Act 8.34 And the eunuch answered Philip, and said, I pray thee, of whom speak the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man. Act 8.35 Then Philip opened his mouth, and began at the same scripture, and preached unto him Yeshua. Act 8.36 And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? Act 8.37 And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Yeshua Messiah is the son of Yahweh. Act 8.38 And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Act 8.39 And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Yahweh caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Act 8.40 But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through he preached in all the cities, till he came to Caesarea. The spirit of the Yahweh caught away Philip. The other disciples were being mystically moved from one place to another. Here Philip went to guide one lamb. We have no clue how many amazing abilities these true disciples, believers, and followers did. We are reminded that Yeshua had told them that they would do greater works than even he did. There are many stories from even the Americas of bearded white men teaching about the Bible truths. The most ancient existing written Ten Commandments are written in New Mexico on a stone in Hebrew. It predates the time of Columbus, without question. It is not a hoax and is not a tourist trap. You can hike there now and see it. Let us look back in time at what Yeshua prophesied about Simon, called Peter. Yeshua appears to seven disciples. Joe 21 colon 1 After these things Yeshua shewed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias, and on this wise shewed he himself. Joe 21 colon 2 There were together Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Joe 21 colon 3 Simon Peter saith unto them, 
I go a-fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth, and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Joe 21 colon 4 But when the morning was now come, Yeshua stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Yeshua. Joe 21 colon 5 Then Yeshua saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. Joe 21 colon 6 And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Joe 21 colon 7 Therefore that disciple whom Yeshua loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. Joe 21 colon 8 And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. Joe 21 colon 9 As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Joe 21 10 Yeshua saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Joe 21 11 Simon Peter went up, and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Joe 21 12 Yeshua saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Joe 21 13 Yeshua then cometh, and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. Joe 21 14 This is now the third time that Yeshua shewed himself to his disciples, after that he was risen from the dead. Yeshua and Peter. Joe 21 15 So when they had dined, Yeshua saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Joe 21 16 He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Joe 21 17 He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Yeshua saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Joe 21 18 Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdedst thyself, and walkedst whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Joe 21 19 This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify Yahweh. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Yeshua and the Beloved Apostle. Joe 21 20 Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Yeshua loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Joe 21 21 Peter seeing him saith to Yeshua, Lord, and what shall this man do? Joe 21 22 Yeshua saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Joe 21 23 Then went the saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die, yet Yeshua said not unto him, He shall not die, but, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Joe 21 24 This is the disciple which testifieth of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Joe 21 25 And there are also many other things which Yeshua did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Simon had returned to his fishing enterprise. He was working at night. Looking to feed his own pocketbook. He was clearly not feeding Yeshua's lambs and sheep. Three times he is told to. Just like the time when he said he would follow him to death. He boldly assumes that he loves Yeshua more than the others do. 
Let us go back to the Last Supper where Simon makes his bold statement. Yeshua foretells Peter's denial. Luke 22:31 And Yeshua said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Luke 22:32 But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Luke 22:33 And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison, and to death. Luke 22:34 And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. As soon as he tells them he is going to be betrayed they are immediately arguing about who will be left in charge. Luke 22:22 And truly the Son of Man goeth, as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Luke 22:23 And they began to inquire among themselves, which of them it was that should do this thing. Who is the greatest? Luke 22:24 And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. Luke 22:25 And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. Luke 22:26 But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. Luke 22:27 For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. They follow Yeshua to the garden where he prayed and awaited the trials that were to follow that very night. When Judas arrived with the multitude to take him to the high priest. Luke 22:49 When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Yeshua, shall we smite with the sword? Luke 22:50 And one of them smote the servant of the high priest, and cut off his right ear. Luke 22:51 And Yeshua answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear, and healed him. John also tells this story. Joe 18:10 Then Simon Peter having a sword drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Joe 18:11 Then said Yeshua unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? What did Yeshua do? Luke 22:51 And he touched his ear, and healed him. Yeshua would not even consider murdering a person coming to crucify him, yet Simon kills a man and his wife for not giving him more money. Let us look closer at John chapter 21 again. A quick repeat of our text to get the context. When looking into such important truths it is imperative to keep the context of each verse even if to the point of becoming repetitive. Please bear with me, there is a reason I do this. I have never liked studies of scripture that do not post the verses referred to but, just write the place to look them up. Yeshua and Peter. Joe 21 15 So when they had dined, Yeshua saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Joe 21:16 He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Joe 21:17 He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Yeshua saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Joe 21 18 Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdedst thyself, and walkedst whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Joe 21 19 This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify Yahweh. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Yeshua and the beloved apostle. Joe 21 20 Then Peter, 
turning about, seat the disciple whom Yeshua loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Joe 21 21 Peter seeing him saith to Yeshua, Lord, and what shall this man do? Joe 21 22 Yeshua saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Joe 21 23 Then went the saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die, yet Yeshua said not unto him, He shall not die, but, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Clearly, Simon is not feeding Yeshua's sheep. Yeshua had told him from the beginning to become a fisher of men. He began his ministry with this and is leaving it into the hands of his disciples with the same intent. Sheep and lambs do not need to be caught in nets in great multitudes. They need to be protected by good shepherds that will truly lay down their own lives to protect them from ravening wolves, especially the ones in sheep's clothing. Shepherds that will leave the whole flock just to find one lost lamb. Sheep need good pastures and gentle waters, true pastors will do this. The methods of Yeshua here are not unlike those of his ministry before the crucifixion. He stands on the shore in the morning after a night of work, to comfort the hearts of believers, revealing the certainty of his help. The eyes of John, who Yeshua loved are the quickest to recognize him. It takes true love to do this, to really know him. Not just someone saying they love Yeshua and boldly declaring to others that he would die for him. This is a picture of the believer's death, the welcome on the other shore of a risen life eternal with Yeshua our Messiah with the prepared feast. He has girded himself as a servant to minister and wash our feet. Simon, wanted to be in charge and have power and wealth. He picks right back up with what he had been doing before he even met Yeshua. He moves on as if the past three and one half years had not even happened. He was unchanged, and had become a murderer of innocent sheep for money. And he is motivated by obvious jealousy of John who did nothing wrong to him. John was known for his true love of Yeshua. And Simon hated him for that alone. Joe 21 20 Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Yeshua loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Joe 21 21 Peter seeing him saith to Yeshua, Lord, and what shall this man do? Joe 21 22 Yeshua saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Joe 21 23 Then went the saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die, yet Yeshua said not unto him, He shall not die, but, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This reference to some not dying was told by Yeshua, long before this. Take up your cross slash shepherd's staff and follow Yeshua. Matt 16 24 Then said Yeshua unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Matt 16 25 For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Matt 16 26 For what is a man profited, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Matt 16 27 For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Matt 16 28 Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here, which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Let us look even deeper in this prophesy of Peter's future. Simon is called, Simon, son of Jonas at the beginning of meeting Yeshua and at the end three more times. Obviously Yeshua is showing us a great sign by this. This ties in with the sign of Jonah. Yeshua, foretelling Simon's future has brought importance to even us now. Joe 21 18 Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdedst thyself, and walkedst whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Girding is a word that represents that which covers us. Our mantle, our robe. It represents our spiritual covering also. 
it is proclaimed that another person shall cover him, spiritually. Simon would reach out his hands to this man and he would carry him someplace that he did not want or plan to go. There is a popular saying about sin like that. You start out wanting it without realizing that it is going to take you and keep you much more and longer than you foresaw, when you were young, foolish, and it seemed a small thing. Who is this powerful person who would lead Simon? Rev 2 colon 1 unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Rev 2 colon 2 I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Rev 2 colon 3 and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast laboured, and hast not fainted. Rev 2 colon 4 Nevertheless I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Rev 2 colon 5 Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Rev 2 colon 6 But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Rev 2 colon 7 He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Yahweh. The type of believer which this church represents is singled out for knowing a great truth. This truth was probably realized by the fact that even though that they were affected by evil authorities and liars, they had managed to figure out who they were. These folks had become patient, laboring and doing good works. Rev 2 colon 2 I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience. Nicolaitans, have never been an actual known city, nation, or specific group. My translation, of the word takes me to the Greek Strong's word number 3531 and means those who are victorious over the people. Bullinger, wrote that these Nicolaitans are people that hate Yahweh. The Ephesians hated this type of person, and Yeshua does also. This word is probably describing this lying false apostle. They are commended for these things. And if they can manage to return to their first love, they will overcome and partake of eternal life. Yahweh, is this first love. He alone is the only one that all people of all time have in common, because he created us all. Thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. So, who are these evil, liar apostles? They claim to be but really are not. It is important to find out so that we also can become patient, laboring and doing good works. To become like Yeshua. The reward is also a clue to who this false apostle is. Rev 2 colon 7 He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Yahweh. Who is the one who deceived us to sin and therefore kept us from eating of the tree of life? Satan. As we have learned Satan uses people and literally moves into them. We are reminded of Yeshua calling Simon Satan. However, Simon was chosen as a disciple, and therefore apostle, also so he cannot qualify as a false apostle. How does one overcome Satan? By following the teachings of Yeshua. How can we do this? By loving Yahweh by keeping the commandments and having good works, fruits of patient labor. It is constantly mentioned that Yeshua loved the disciple John. And on no occasion is he ever condemned directly by Yeshua. All John's writings are full of reminders to do good works and to keep the commandments. This is how we show true love. This is the path of returning to our first love. The narrow gate that few are entering because they have been deceived by ravening wolves in sheep's clothing. Who are these ravening wolves? When in doubt go back to the beginning. Genesis. Jacob blesses his sons. Gen 49:1 And Jacob called unto his sons, and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. These prophecies are specifically to be understood in our time. 
no other generation has been able to see the fullness of what has come as a result of these Satan-filled false teachers and the church that they built full of false doctrine. Gen 49,5 Simeon, same as name Simon, and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty are in their habitations, churches. Gen 49,6 O oh my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor, be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they digged down a wall. Gen 49,7 Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel, I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. We are reminded of Simon Peter and his anger, wrath, self-will, cruelty and the church that he built. Jacob, who is also called Israel prays that his soul will not be united in this assembly. Levi is the priest tribe and, in the end has fallen into these same practices and fulfill this also in the modern church and their false preachers with their wrong and lying doctrine. I cannot expect that these individuals would know to teach anything else. I judge them not but, once we awaken to the truth it is important that we share it. No matter who we are we should do what we can to help our brethren to come to the true and righteous narrow gate and path where we find Yahweh, by following and abiding with and in Yeshua. The Holy Spirit, Ruash HaKoj, is sent to teach us and lead us to the truth. Satan has always used and twisted scripture and mixed apparently high and good ideas with outright lies. Don't be surprised that Paul and Peter write many scriptural truths. Satan used the scripture truths and cleverly inserted evil doctrine right from the beginning. Our present scripture is full of it. Only in our time does the common person have tools at their disposure to seek, search, dig and even translate the hidden truth. I am very monetarily poor, do not even have electricity or plumbing. Not even a candle. I live in a 16x16 tiny house I hand built with recycled materials. I have no internet and am writing this on a computer that was gifted to me. I have paid for none of the scripture tools I use to find the Greek and Hebrew. I carry water and wood. My road is a creek. I broke my back and could barely walk yet had to escape a foreign country a month later, I was trapped there for 11 years, with only what I could carry. I was led by the Holy Spirit and made it back to my homeland penniless and homeless. While stuck in that country on a roadless 8,500 feet snow-covered mountain I studied Hebrew and began to reread the Bible in the original form. When I start to feel sorry for myself, I am quickly reminded of the multitudes of humans who would love to have what I now have. Homeless, cold, starving folks. I only mention this, not to boast but to inspire folks to do all they can now with what they have, and even what they have not, to share the truth. Let us continue with Jacob's prophesy of last days. Gen 49,22 Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. Gen 49,23 The archers have sorely grieved him, and shot at him, and hated him. Gen 49,24 But his bough abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty Elohim of Jacob, from thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Gen 49,25 Even by the Elohim of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breasts, and of the womb. Gen 49,26 The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills, they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. This tribe of Joseph became Britain, all the United Kingdom, and the countries that came from her, like America. Britain is where the stone of scone, Jacob's stone, rests literally under the throne of the queen. They are blessed because more than any other people they have endeavored to spread the gospel. These blessings are upon Ephraim and Manasseh also because they are from that tribe. British is a Hebrew word and literally means covenant man, ish means man. Let us look at the prophesy of the tribe of Benjamin. Gen 49,27 Benjamin shall ravin as a wolf, in the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. 
Act 13:21 And afterward they desired a king, and Yahweh gave unto them Saul the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. Forty years is always a time of trial in Scripture. Act 13:22 And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. These previous verses took us back to King Saul. The namesake of Paul whose real name was Saul. King Saul was known for his rash behavior, anger, insanity, and attempt to murder David. He was indeed a ravening wolf. From now on I will not be translating the Greek false names that Paul slash Saul used and promoted. I will write them the way Paul spread them. So you can clearly see his evil works. Rom 11 colon 1 I say then, hath go cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. PHP 3 colon 4 Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. PHP 3 colon 5 Circumcised the eighth day, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. PHP 3 colon 6 Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. PHP 3 colon 7 But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. PHP 3 colon 8 Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. PHP 3 colon 9 And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. PHP 310 That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. PHP 311 If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Clearly, Paul is doing whatever he thinks he needs to. His purpose is to save himself. Saul, self-proclaimed apostle that brags that he is a Benjamite. There is a so-called apostle in scripture that is mentioned by name as trying to teach this town, his doctrine, and leading them in his own teaching. One of the books in the canon are written by him. Ephesians 1 colon 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, become patient, laboring and doing good works. I kept the false Greek and Phoenician names because it is Paul who first started using them and spreading them among those he came into contact with. This is fully diametrically opposed to the third commandment. Exo 20 colon 7 Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Paul whose actual name is Saul, also replaces Yahweh with the name of the Phoenician god of fortune Gad and turns Yeshua's name into Jesus, which literally means son of Zeus in Greek. Paul teaches a doctrine of grace through faith. This is fully a lie. We have heard it all our lives and it sounds so good. It makes it seem that all we really need to do is claim Jesus as, Christ and forever after do nothing more. Even the demons know and proclaim this and did so repeatedly even to Yeshua in his previous walk here. We need to strive to really follow our wonderful shepherd and keep his lambs and sheep. To feed them the truth, at any cost. What did Paul teach this church that is at Ephesus? F1 colon 5 Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. F1 colon 6 To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved. F1 colon 7 In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. F1 colon 8 Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. F1 colon 9 Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. F1 10 That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, 
both which are in heaven, and which are on earth, even in him. Once again this binding and loosening mention, or as above so below as the Satanists say. Another mention of these words and power of Satan by Yeshua. Lut 13:16 And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Yeshua set women free. It is clear here who has the power of binding and loosening and why Peter was called Satan. Yeshua is not going to gather all things in heaven and earth into one. This earth age is evil, fallen, full of death and sin. Once the real truth and the real king and high priest teach the truth the heavens and earth will be fully made new. This will happen at the end of the millennium to come. Paul teaches grace and removes works. The word grace occurs twelve times in his letter slash book to the Ephesians alone. Remember what Yeshua said in the book of Revelation to this church. They were specifically condoned for knowing who the false apostle was who Yeshua hated as they came to also. Rev 2 colon 2 I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Rev 2 colon 3 And hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Rev 2 colon 6 But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. They had learned to throw off the writings and teachings of Paul. And instead of grace through faith, labored with patience and did good works. These seven churches in Revelation are not just historical churches. They are actual types of believers in Yeshua today. It is important that we know the truth also and teach it. This has never been fully accomplished. The truth needs to be told, the real good news the true gospel. Ephesus was in Asia, with many other churches Paul took over and tried to teach his doctrine to. 2 Ti 1.15 This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. All Asia had turned against him eventually. They finally figured out what Paul was really all about. Power, money, his doctrines, the submission and silencing of half the believers through all time till now. Women. This is what Paul teaches about women. 1 Ti 2.11 Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. 1 Ti 2.12 But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. 1 Ti 2.13 For Adam was first formed, then Eve. 1 Ti 2.14 And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. 1 Ti 2.15 Notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. 2 Ti 3.6 For of this sort are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. 2 Ti 3.7 Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Co 11 7 For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of Yahweh, but the woman is the glory of the man. 1 Ti 5.13 And withal they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Half of all Christians are women and they were made silent and forbidden to teach by Paul. Think of the implications of that alone. It was prophesied that Antichrist should not love women. Dan 11.37 Neither shall he regard the Elohim of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any El, for he shall magnify himself above all. She shall be saved in childbearing How could someone make up a new salvation for women alone? What about ones that cannot bear children? Are they unsaved? This is clearly a ploy to stop the humans most naturally inclined with good communication skills. Barnabas was the first person to help Paul and took him to meet the actual disciples. When the writer of the Gospel of Mark wanted to travel with them, Paul said he could not. Even though Barnabas had spent years with Paul he could take no more. He and John Mark went their own way teaching and never saw Paul again. Was Paul afraid that John Mark would set him straight on the teachings of Yeshua? 
perhaps Paul did not want anyone around that he could not control or that might be considered a higher authority than he. Paul speaks continually about himself, no other writer in the Bible says I and my so much. 2 Ti 3.10 But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. 2 Ti 3.11 Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. 2 Ti 3.14 But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. 2 Ti 3.15 And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Ti 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. A fully outright lie. The scriptures are full of sayings by Satan himself and many demon-possessed liars. Think of the book of Job alone. Most of it are the words of Satan and Job's deceived friends telling him lies. Paul has made his letters into scripture and calls them inspired, breathed by Yahweh. This second epistle was written to Timotheus, ordained the first bishop of the church of the Ephesians, by Paul, and written from Rome. Once we awaken to who these false teaches and their man-made churches we clearly see that almost everything John wrote is a clear or veiled reference and even outright warning against specifically Simon, Peter, and Saul, Paul. At the very end of the book of Acts Paul, is not martyred like many others. But actually, lives on the money he collected from poor believers in his own hired house. Act 28,29 And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves. Acts 28,30 And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him. Act 28,31 Preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Even the Jews departed and reportedly gave him no more trouble. PHP 422 All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. Act 27 colon 1 And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus band. Act 27 colon 3 And the next day we touched at Sidon. And Julius courteously entreated Paul, and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. Rom 1611 Salute Hero Dion my kinsman. Paul had connections and powerful relatives even. Paul and Peter most likely retired and lived the good life in Rome. Thus, is the beginning of the church that Simon and Saul built. The evil church full of Babylonian traditions, symbols, and teachings. A great split happened because of this. True believers were silenced and even killed. They were forced into hiding by the powers that became the present-day churches even. Druids, Celts, Essenes, Mystics, Gnostics, so-called heretics, all believers who split off from the Catholic lies. Deception, power, traditions of men, ranks of teachers and worst of all a pope who they claim to be God on earth. These truths were to be hidden till now that we may understand and seek the true way of Yeshua. Like the church of Ephesus in Revelation, we must turn and go back to our first love. We must follow only Yeshua alone by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Ruash HaKodesh, in Hebrew. The Holy Inspiration. The literal breath of Yahweh. The Pharisees and Sadducees demand signs. There is so much teaching which may be compared to leaven. Hurtful and false doctrine, propagated by churches and believers. We must learn to discern these teachings, not by their pleasant and innocent appearance, but by their effect on heart and character. Matt 16 1 The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. Matt 16 2 He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, yes say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. Matt 16 3 And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites, 
ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times. Matt 16 4 A wicked and adulterous generation seeked after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them, and departed. This word generation can also be translated as nation or people group. A wise shepherd should discern the signs of the times so he can lead the sheep to safe haven. The scriptures are full of signs specifically about this time we live in. Dan 12 8 And I heard, but I understood not, then said I, O Yahweh, what shall be the end of these things? Dan 12 9 And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Dan 12 10 Many shall be purified, and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Even the prophets did not understand the signs of the end that they wrote about. They were hidden for a reason. The truth became twisted and lost from the time of Peter and Paul. The Catholic Church did not even have services in the languages of the people but in Latin eventually. It clearly mistranslated and hid many writings and truths and propagated only the ones that would give power to themselves and the people and nations they controlled. Even in our multiple denominations of Protestant churches today the teachings and doctrine have not changed much. Still the lies of grace replacing the law and the prophets is the underlying doctrine. Even the Messianic and Hebrew roots congregations follow Peter and Paul. Yeshua did not come to abolish the law but to fulfill it. The commandants are not chains to those who love Yahweh. They are guideposts of the narrow path. Yahweh has always showed grace and mercy. The so-called law is a roadmap to righteousness and wisdom. It is a gift to light our path to freedom and eternal peace. There are a few teachers on the internet now that are teaching the truth about Paul. I know of none that are clearly tracking the truth about Peter. The New Temple most are expecting the building of a new temple by the Jews in Jerusalem. They may still do that, but it will be an interfaith one most likely. The nation that calls itself Israel is not the people of the bloodline from the tribes of Israel. It has very few people from the bloodline of the tribe of Judah even. It has mostly Ashkenazi Jews, which are the descendants of East Europeans that chose Judaism as a belief. The largest population of Orthodox Jews live in New York. They actively oppose the nation, political methods, and beliefs of Israel. Israel has become a great power because most assume that they are the chosen people. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that the twelve tribes of Israel became the one tribe of Judah. Judah was only a chosen tribe for the lineage of the birth of Yeshua. Most Christians today assume that we are supposed to defend Israel and the Jews because they are chosen. America has provided large sums of money and troops to defend it because of this. There is an even smaller nation that is even more powerful and rich than Israel. The Vatican. The smallest, richest nation in the world. Yes, it is an actual separate nation within Rome, Italy. The church that Simon Peter and Saul Paul built. Let us look at the FC for translation again. Matt 16 4 A wicked and adulterous nation seeks after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Yonah. Clearly the Vatican and the Pope have the upper hand over most leaders in the world even popular Protestant teachers. Every who visits with the Pope is instructed to bow their head and kiss his ring. The Vatican Bank has more money than any nation. A wicked and adulterous nation indeed. They are clearly the head of the new Pharisees. The temple described by Ezekiel is amazingly laid out also as the Vatican. I know not if this was intentional or somehow a symbol of what shall be in a yet future temple in Jerusalem. So many of these exact symbols already exist in Vatican City. Abominations in the Temple Ease 8 5 Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold northward at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry. He's 8 colon 6 He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, 
and thou shalt see greater abominations. Ease 8 colon 7 And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold a hole in the wall. Ease 8 colon 8 Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall, and when I had digged in the wall, behold a door. Ease 8 colon 9 And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. Ease 8 10 So I went in and saw, and behold every form of creeping things, and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel, portrayed upon the wall round about. Ease 8 11 And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jazaniah the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Ease 8 12 Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, Yahweh seeth us not, Yahweh hath forsaken the earth. Ease 8 13 He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Ease 8 14 Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Yahweh's house which was toward the north, and, behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Ease 8 15 Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Ease 8 16 And he brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house, and, behold, at the door of the temple of Yahweh, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Ease 8 17 Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence, and have returned to provoke me to anger, and, lo, they put the branch to their nose. Ease 8 18 Therefore will I also deal in fury, mine I shall not spare, neither will I have pity, and though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. At the entry of the Vatican is a large statue of Peter and in the center of the courtyard is a huge ancient Egyptian pillar. Women weeping for Tammuz can be seen in the large statue of Mary weeping with the body of Yeshua in her arms. Nuns weep before it. Many say that this statue is really the wife of Nimrod weeping for her dead son Tammuz. The Vatican is full of Babylonian and pagan symbolism. This is a prophecy about the very end of the millennium and Babylon. It shows Satan's desire to be enthroned even wanting to be like the Most High Yahweh. Esau 14 13 For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yahweh, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. Esau 14 14 I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Esau 14 15 Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Satan in the end days as Antichrist. Dan 11 31 And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make desolate. Dan 11 32 And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know Yahweh shall be strong, and do exploits. Dan 11:33 And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword, and by flame, by captivity, and by spoil, many days. Dan 11:34 Now when they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Dan 11:35 And some of them of understanding shall fall, to try them, and to purge, and to make them white even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Dan 11.36 And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself, and magnify himself above every Elohim, and shall speak marvelous things against the Elohim of Elohim, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Dan 11.37 Neither shall he regard Yahweh of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any L, for he shall magnify himself above all. Dan 11:38. But in his estate shall he honor the Elohim of forces, 
and El whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold, and silver, and with precious stones, and pleasant things. Dan 11:39 Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange El, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. St. Peter's Cathedral is the focus of the Vatican. It is the place of worship and the most sacred place to Catholics. Inside we have the altar in the very back. It has very large shining golden sun with projecting rays. Below the sun is a giant golden throne. It is carved with angels and such underneath the sun, below and above the throne. Does this seem odd to you that the main focal point of all worship is to a throne? I have not seen this in any other church, even Catholic ones. The throne is a golden carved seat that is empty. It is called Peter's chair. Peter's chair is the thing that they worship. The whole cathedral is built for it. Catholics say that the actual chair of Simon Peter is inside this golden carved throne. Who is being worshipped in reality? Who sat in Peter's chair? Is this the ploy of Satan using and entering Peter? I seriously doubt that most folks even think about what is really going on here. They are not honoring Yeshua or Yahweh. They are honoring Simon Peter bar Jonah. Remember that Simon Peter, Petros equals A and movable rock, was actually called Simon bar Jonah by Yeshua. Simon son of Jonah, of the lineage of a man named Jonah. Above the seat are angels lowering a crown over the seat. Abominations in the temple. He's 8 colon 1 and it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. He's 8 colon 2 then I beheld, and lo a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire, and from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. He's 8 colon 3 and he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looped toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked to jealousy. Remember how insanely jealous Peter was of John? Reminds me of the Benjamite King Saul and his obsession with David. Of course, there is also the jealousy of Yahweh for his children. How he feels when we turn to other gods. This word for Jerusalem actually means Jerusalem Ward Strong's Hebrew Concordance number 53389, it means towards, in the direction of Jerusalem, so may refer to direction relative to where Ezekiel was. He's 8 colon 4 and, behold, the glory of Yahweh of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. He's 8 colon 5 Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold northward at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry. He's 8 colon 6 He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. He's 8 colon 7 And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold a hole in the wall. He's 8 colon 8 Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall, and when I had digged in the wall, behold a door. He's 8 colon 9 And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. He's 8 10 So I went in and saw, and behold every form of creeping things, and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel, portrayed upon the wall round about. The Vatican has the largest collection of ancient pagan art and artifacts in the world. It also is covered with carvings of creeping things, and abominable beasts, and idols. He's 811 And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jazania the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Incense is continually burnt inside the cathedral. He's 812 Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, 
Yahweh seeth us not, Yahweh hath forsaken the earth. Ease 813 He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Ease 814 Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house which was toward the north, and, behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. This of course is the giant statue of Mary with the crucified Christ in her lap. Pagans and Egyptians have long said that Mary and her child, was just a Christianized version of Tammuz and his Babylonian mother the wife of Nimrod. Nuns and women weep before it continually. This is in a side wing of St. Paul's. Ease 815 Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Ease 816 And he brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house, and, behold, at the door of the temple of Yahweh, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. In the center, is an area where the priests lie head down, flat on the floor with their heads toward the large sun altar. Ease 817 Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence, and have returned to provoke me to anger, and, lo, they put the branch to their nose. Branch to the nose refers to burning incense. Is 818 Therefore will I also deal in fury, mine I shall not spare, neither will I have pity, and though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Seven times Yahweh mentions the word abomination, in the above verses. Clearly, we are finding the signs of the abomination of desolation. East 22:23 And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying. East 22:24 Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. In the day of indignation the land is not cleansed of her desolations. East 22:25 There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls, they have taken the treasure and precious things, they have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Obviously, the modern churches have done these. And they pat each other on the back as they do. A conspiracy indeed. East 22:26 Her priests have violated my law, and have profaned mine holy things, they have put no difference between the holy and profane, neither have they shewed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. The teachers teach grace replacing law, are worldly, teach to eat whatever we want, have the Sabbath on the wrong day and have profaned Yahweh. East 22:27. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey, to shed blood, and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. Another mention of the prophesy of the tribe of Benjamin, the ravening wolves, killing, destroying souls even, in their false religion of Paul and Peter, and have made Yeshua into their cash cow of Jesus. East 22:28 And her prophets have dogged them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, when Yahweh hath not spoken. The Christian teachers have covered the truth, are vainly teaching lies that they claim they learn from Yahweh. East 22:29 The people of the land have used oppression, and exercised robbery, and have vexed the poor and needy, yeah, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. East 22:30 And I sought for a man among them, that should make up the hedge, and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. East 22:31 Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them, I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith Yahweh. Yahweh is simply going to let us have the same methods and ramifications of what we have done. In the end he just lets it out. Let us go back to the seat of Peter in the Vatican. Above the seat are two angels carved with a crown they are placing on the head of the seated one. This is Peter's chair, so he as Satan sits in it. This crown is not an ordinary type crown but the mitre hats that the popes and those in high ranks wear. They are tall with a split on top. 
they represent a fish head with open mouth. This is the symbol of the god of the nine beads. His name is Dagon. When folks say Dagon it they are ignorantly calling on that god. Jonah was swallowed by the fish god, Dagon, of the people he was being sent to call to repentance. Have we also been sent to a people? He survived inside of their god by the power of the true Elohim, Yahweh. This is the sign of Jonah. Satan sitting where he ought not is the abomination of desolation. Matt 24 colon 15 When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso redeth, let him understand. Mar underscore 13 colon 14 But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that redeth understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Dan underscore 1131 And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make desolate. Dan underscore 12 colon 11 And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Could this be the days slash years between the crucifixion and the beginning of this false church coming into full power or the end of sacrifices by Jews till the building of this throne? Perhaps these are just symbols of some yet future event. I do not know. The scriptures have many levels of interpretation. Some are actual events that have happened or shall yet happen. Some are symbolic. Perhaps the crown of Dagon over Peter's chair is a warning and of who not to follow. Pray to Yahweh that he alone will show you the truth about the teachings and ways of Simon Peter and Saul Paul. Take no man's word but seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit on this narrow path to truth. May Yahweh bless your search and your walk and give you the refreshing of the waters of life on this lonely trail.